welcome everybody. I see that there are also our presenters that are here today. Um, I want to welcome everyone to today's webinar. Um, we have an introduction to sugar which is brought to you by Sugar Serum in collaboration with our UK gold partner Enable IT. My name is Evi, I'm with Sugar Serum, responsible for marketing here, and I will moderate today's session. To start with, I would like to introduce our main speakers for today. Um, I'm happy to have with me Mike from Enable IT. He will tell us more about the use of Sugar Serum to its full potential, covering sales processes, customizing user profiles, and of course, much more. Really looking forward to those presentations. Hi, Mike. Good afternoon, Evie. Hi to everybody. Hi. Um, now, before we start, I would like to give you some functional information about today's webinar. First and foremost, all attendees are muted throughout the webinar. Please use the WebEx chat interface on the right bottom of your page to submit a question to the panelists. We will try to answer these questions within our Q&A session at the end of this webinar. But I think at the moment uh, we can start if everything works with the Q&A. So I just want to ask our audience, which is not small today I can see, um, where are you from? Because uh, we, have, we send invitations all over the world, so I'm really interested where our audience is from today. So you have the Q&A section at the right bottom of your page. And it would be great if you can enter here where you are from, in, not, not in detail. <laughs> We're not interested in your addresses. Uh, we have Surrey, England, Glasgow from Scotland, New Jersey, USA here as well, um, Aberdeen, London, Oh, also from Athens, from Greece, welcome also as well. So I see um, that we have people all over the world here. So, um, Mike, I'm really looking forward to your presentation. And um, just one thing more, I want to tell you that this webinar will be recorded. Um, and if you want to watch it afterwards or want to share it with friends or colleagues, the recording will be made available on our website, sugarcrm.com, and also on the sugarcrm.uk page. And each attendee will be notified with the URL. That's not the problem. You can find it also under um, webcast slash on demand. I'm now more too happy to hand over to Mike. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready when you are. Okay, so welcome to this afternoon's presentation. As Evie's mentioned, um, it is a, an introduction to Sugar CRM. Um, I've been working with Enable IT Sugar UK now for the last 14 years. Uh, we've been using Sugar CRM ourselves in-house since 2004, and in that time we've worked very closely with Sugar CRM to form the relationship that we've got with them today and seen the, the software actually develop and progress to the software package that I'm going to demonstrate to you today. The software that we're actually looking at today is going to be based around the Sugar Professional Edition. So some of the things that may be cropping up today, things like the screen layout for a start that you're seeing, are going to be primarily based around the Professional Edition. The majority of the functionality we will be discussing is available in all editions, right the way from Community Edition up to the full Enterprise and Ultimate Editions. Um, but to begin with, we'll go through what the standard cell process is within the Sugar CRM system. There are primarily four types of people that are connected within the Sugar Serum system. The first being users. Those are the individuals who will be having access to the data stored in your Sugar Serum system, as well as uh, being able to control what is actually being seen with the, the administrative privileges of those users in the system as well. So these are the people that are going to have access to the system, look at what data is stored in there, and be able to edit manage and change the data to make sure that it's all kept up to date, relevant and accurate. The second person record within the sugar system are targets. Now these are primarily used for marketing purposes. They are complete unknowns. It could be that you bought a list of people off the internet from a lead generation company who have said, well, we've got a whole load of names, email addresses, phone numbers that you can actually start to talk to to try and generate more interest in what you're offering as a company. Targets, as I said, typically get used for things like mass email campaigns, tele-campaigns, tele uh, 
telecommunication calls to try and generate interest in your company and products and services that you're offering. Once that interest has been identified that yes, they want to know more about what we do, they get converted across to the third type of person record, which is a lead within Sugar CRM. Now, leads are more firmly um, evaluated already. They've met that criteria that yes, they want to know more about what you as a company do. All the information about the person, the company that they work for, all their contact details is going to be stored within that single lead record. And it's going to allow you to have those activities, calls, meetings, tasks that you've got to hold with those individuals to the, the point of trying to identify is there an opportunity to do business with that person, whether it be by creating a partnership between your companies, whether it be providing them with goods or services that you're offering to your customer base. At the point that that tip over, that qualification has been reached, that lead record is converted and split from that single record containing all the information about the person and the company into two. First of all, it creates the fourth person type record, which is a contact, and it creates a related account or organization, company record, if you will, that that contact works for. The reason why it splits the record at that point, it's a perfectly logical progression at that point, is because once you've identified the opportunities that you're going to be working with that company around, chances are that you're going to be introduced to more people who work within that company. Therefore, by splitting that record at the immediate point that you find that opportunity, you can therefore create additional contacts against the company account record to track which individuals within that company you're having the discussions with, who are the influencers, the financial decision makers, who are overall going to be tied in with the ultimate decision of whether they are going to do business and form a business relationship with you and your company. Tied in with those people and company records, we have things like opportunities. These are the actual sales opportunities that you are having with those people and companies. Opportunities are not people. They are the actual sales activity that you have identified with that person at that company. Again, in the background, tied in with all those different people records, the targets, the leads, the contacts, you'll have a combination of calls, meetings, tasks that you've got to do with those people to try and generate them from firstly the target to be converted to a sales lead to be passed to your salespeople who will then work them through to the point of becoming a contact and account as a prospect and these are the people who you've identified the opportunity with but who have not yet been realized as actual customers for your company. Once they do come to maturity the opportunity is one you've actually tied that person down and got the business with them, the account record is changed, modified slightly, to say that the type of relationship that your company has with that organization is that they have gone now from being a prospect to being a customer. And we'll see that as we go through the presentation of changing records, creating records, and updating the system all the way through. The screen we're on at the moment is the home page. It's your dashboard on what is happening within the CRM system. Now, one of the first differences that you'll notice if you're a community edition user rather than a professional edition is the fact that on the licensed editions of Sugar CRM, that's professional, corporate, enterprise, ultimate, you can actually have multiple tabs on your home screen. So you're going to be able to split up the information based on what the content of those particular dashboards are that you're wanting to focus on. We can see here that we've got our calls and meetings dashlets. These give a window per user on what activities that person has got stored throughout the entire CRM system. And in this case, it's showing what calls I've got to make and what meetings I've got to make. These are all color coded. So anything on the current date will appear in amber to say this is something which is happening at some point today. Anything to, with tomorrow's date or further in the future is black to say this is something that's coming up but it's not priority at the moment. And anything which has gone one minute or more into the past will immediately flag as red to alert you that this is something that you should by now have done. And by sorting those via those start dates and putting them into chronological order, you've now in essence got a to-do list straight on your homepage of what activities, what calls, meetings you've got to be able to work through 
and track your activities all the way through to try and generate that business, close that business deal that you've got with those contacts and leads within the system. We'll go and quickly have a, a look at some of those records to give an idea of the type of information that's being stored. We'll start on the lead record. Because we're looking at the sales process, we'll presume that the targets have already been imported in, they've been worked on by our marketing department and passed across to us as a salesperson to now start actually working with. It should be noted that any type of person record can be created at any stage of that sales process. They don't have to go in as a target to be converted to a lead, to be converted to a contact, just because we've got an existing customer that we're wanting to put into the system. We can put them straight in as contacts, straight as accounts, without having to go through all the nitty gritty of going through those, those hoops to convert from a target to a lead to a contact. If we know that they already exist, within our organization as a customer contact, we can put them straight in as that record type. Sugar CRM tries to make things as obvious and straightforward as possible. Therefore, within the Sugar product, you will find that wherever you are in the system, the module header, as it's called at the top, is always highlighted in dark blue so that you are given a visual indication as to what type of record you are looking at at that point. And by searching or clicking on the module header in the first instance, you'll be presented with the list view of all the records in that particular module which meet your search criteria. We can see here that we've got a number of lead records already in the system, and by clicking on the name of a particular person, it's going to take us into their lead record to show what information we've currently got stored about that individual. Where they came from, well, they obviously filled in a form on our website. Is how we've got them as a new lead in the system. What their name is, who they work for, their job role, basically all the information that from the first instance as a salesperson we need to know about that person in order to contact them to start the dialogue and communication with them. As we start to learn more information about the person, we can populate any of the fields as we start to find that information out. And it should be noted that with your CRM system, as soon as you have that information, you should put it in there and then. If you leave it until a later date and think, well, I'll get round to putting this information in later, chances are you never will. You'll keep referring back to that business card on your desk, that document that you wrote while you're in the meeting with them, rather than updating it into the CRM system. By having a centralized CRM system, not only is it allowing you as an individual to see those people you're working on, it's allowing everybody in your organization, depending on the roles and permissions that you've got, set by your administrators in your system, to see that information, share that knowledge, without having to keep going to different people's desks asking, have you got this particular person's phone number? Do you know their job title? If it's in the CRM, you are making that accessible to all your workforce immediately as well as being able to see it yourself and make you as an individual far more effective and more efficient. So we can see the information we've got on the particular person, and as we scroll down, you'll see we have sub-panels showing our to-do activities. This is, if you like, our to-do list of what have we still got to do with this particular individual. This is where we're going to see all the calls, the meetings, the tasks that we've got to still do with that person, as well as being able to compose an email directly to the person's email address. Once those meetings are marked as held, that we've actually had those meetings, we've made that call, they will drop down automatically into the history panel. And the history panel is going to allow us to see what work effort to date has been done with these people to try and convince them as a lead to do business with us to actually take those products and services that we're offering. We can also, tied in again with our marketing department, see what email campaigns, newsletter campaigns have been going out and what reaction these particular individuals have had to them, whether they've viewed the email, whether they've clicked on any links, if they did, which link it was that they actually clicked on. If the message was initially sent to them, if it bounced back because the email address was invalid, for example, it's all going to be visible in multiple directions. Firstly, from the person record, we will see what activity that individual had around those campaigns we sent. Secondly, from the marketing point of view, when they are looking at their actual campaigns they've sent out, it will give them an overview for that particular campaign as to all the people who have looked at it, 
all the people who've clicked on those links and will allow them to track how many times they viewed them and clicked on those links so that they can quickly identify those individuals who are really showing an interest in what has been sent to allow them to convert them across to leads to be worked on by the sales department. So right the way from day one where that person's information goes into the system and the marketing department start trying to convince them to do business with us, all the individuals within the organization can see in the CRM system what is happening with them and be able to track them through from that initial stage right the way through to actual supply of products and services. To create any record in Sugar CRM, we simply hover over, in the case of the licensed editions, hover over the module header, and this will allow us to see the actions that are available in that particular module, as well as the most recently viewed records in that individual module. Now say that this is in the licensed versions, on Community Edition, they're not drop-down options, it will simply be extra rows across the top that give those actions and last viewed records across the entire system. The exception to this rule, within the licensed editions of the recently viewed, is the home button or the sugar cube at the top left of the dashboard screen or the, the main title screen, which when we hover over that will show us the most recently viewed records across the entire system by us as an individual. So rather than having to know was it a lead, a contact, a target we were last looking at, we can quickly go to that home screen and see the most recently viewed across the entire system. So to create a record, we hover over the module header, and in the Actions section, we would select to create a record in that particular module, in this case, creating a lead record. When we click on Create Lead, it's going to take us to the creation screen, where we will see all the fields which, as a user, we have got the ability to edit, to add information into. And once a record has been saved and created in the Sugar CRM system, we will be able to edit that and keep that updated time and time again by using the Edit button, which will appear at the top when we save the record away. Now, it should be pointed out at this point that within the CRM system, within Sugar, you can define from an administration point which fields are mandatory and must be filled in in order for a particular record to be saved. These are always denoted by a red asterisk. Anywhere you see the red asterisk, that is a mandatory field. If you try to save the record away without filling those in, it will flag up to say you haven't filled in the minimum required information that is needed in order to create this type of record. So you fill in the information you've got, we can separate information onto tabbed screens so that you can have information categorized within that particular record rather than having all the fields on one particular screen. And the Sugar system allows you as a user, as a company, to have as many custom fields as you want in any record. There are no artificial limits that say, well, you can have up to 200 custom fields across the entire system. You can create as many fields as you want on any of the modules, any of the record types within Sugar, and that's as standard across the board in all versions. So by putting them onto tabs, we can group the information together and allow us to see at a very quick glance what the information is around the particular tab that we're on. So we could have things here like sales information, marketing information, communication information as to when was the last time we called an individual, for example. And by grouping them on tabs, it means that we're decluttering the screen, again, making our workforce more efficient because they're not having to search around masses of data on a particular screen because it's been restricted by the administration staff to be the most logical manner of putting that data and presenting it to our users. So you'd fill in the information you've got, you'd hit the Save button, that then will take you to the actual record that you have just saved. And you'll know that you saved it because the Save button will disappear and it will now change to an Edit. As I mentioned earlier on, at any point, any user, subject to their permissions and rights within the Sugar system, can come and edit any of the information on those screens. And by keeping the information up to date, we know that any activity, whether it be marketing emails through campaigns, whether it be we're making a phone call to a person, as long as the data is up to date, we know that the communication and correspondence we are having with those people is going to be accurate and give us a true and real view of what is happening with those people. 
comes to, for example, things like creating contact records, because at the point that we convert a lead into a contact, it also gets a related account record, we have the option to select related records. And again, using the administration studio in the back of Sugar, your administration staff are going to be able to create those relationships between the different modules, the different record types that your organization may need to have in place. By clicking on the select arrow, it allows us to pick which record which is that we're looking that this person works for. We have various filter criteria that we can specify and say, well, this is the particular company that I'm searching for. Does it exist in the system? If it does, we can immediately just click on its name to relate that contact to that company. Alternately, the company may not exist at the moment, and we already have the option then to create a new account record, which this particular contact that we're creating in the background will automatically be related to. So again, it's saving us time, it's making us work far more efficiently, and making us work smarter. So creating records in Sugar CRM is a very, very straightforward process. Simply go to the module you're looking for to create an individual record. However, it could well be that you're wanting to create additional contacts onto a company that you know already exists. There may be more than one person that you're wanting to create. Well, the best practice there would be to actually go to the account record itself. So we go into the accounts module. We would search for the company that we're looking for using either the basic search, which allows us on the majority of modules to look for the name of the record, those records which have been assigned to us or those that we've marked as a favorite by clicking on the little star next to the record or on the top of the screen when the record name is visible, or by using the advanced search, our administrators can specify which additional fields we also want to be able to search by and narrow down those results that come at the bottom. This means, again, we can quickly and effectively find those records that we're looking for we can click on the name of the company that we're wanting to add those additional people to. And when we scroll down at the company record, we will find that we've still got things like the activities, our to-do list, the history panel. From an account level, it should be pointed at this point, that these activities and histories are automatically driven from those activities that you have put against the people who work in this company. It's giving a company overview of who are we talking to in this company, what calls and meetings have we got with individuals in that building, what activity have we previously had with anybody in that particular company. The next section down that we've got the subpanel is the contacts. And at this point, straight away, we can create a new contact record, which because we're coming from the account record itself, is instantly going to be related to the company. It's saving us a step. It's making us a little bit more efficient and saving us time as an individual. It's also pulling through the company main office number, which may be that individual's phone number, in the majority of cases, if it is that they've got a slightly different direct dial number or an extension, we can simply append that to the end of the office phone or change the actual direct dial number for that individual. Again, we're not having to type out too much information because it's pulling a lot through from that company record. So keeping the records up to date, actually storing it all in the correct format is going to be very, very simple for our users to do. To actually create those activities, we mentioned at the beginning that when we're looking at our home screen, we've got the calls to make, we've got what meetings we're having. In order to actually get those to populate through to be able to track who we're having those calls with, who we're having the meetings with, we would always go to the person record, whether it be a, a target, a lead, a contact. We would never directly log a call or a meeting or a task against an account record. Reason being, you, chances are you are not going to have a phone call with a bricks and mortar building. It's going to be one of the people who are inside that building, who work for that organization. Therefore, by going to the particular contact record we're looking for, we type in the name of the contact by either going to the contact module and filling in the particular search criteria we're looking for, or by using the global search at the top of the screen, we can again look for a particular person that we're after. 
when we search on it, it's going to search through more than just the current module that we're in. So we can see that Grant Rupp has obviously come from a lead, he's been converted to a contact. We should therefore be doing any activities, any calls or meetings against the contact record because that is the highest point that we've actually qualified this person to at this present time. We click on Grant's name, it takes us to his record, we can see all the information that we've got about him, and we can immediately on the activities go and schedule a call to that individual. By clicking on the More Actions drop down under the Activities subpanel, we're given the option to schedule a meeting or, as in this case, we want to, to log the call. We click on Log Call and it's going to ask us a number of required mandatory fields. We have to give the call a name. If we don't give it a name, we're not going to be able to find that call in the system later because that is the actual field which is used for the link to get back into the record. So it could well be that we're having a catch-up call with this particular person. If my spelling works properly. It's going to be an outbound call. We can specify whether they'd rung us or we were ringing them. And at the moment, the call is merely planned. We've not yet made it. We can specify the start date and time. Again, it's a required field. We have to put something in there. It's automatically, by default, going to be pre-populated with 30 minutes on or the next 15 minutes on from the current time that your system is currently running at. So we specify by clicking on the calendar box which date it is that we want to make. Well, it's got to be tomorrow morning that we'll have that call. So we click on the 8th immediately updates our date format. We specify the start time of the call, so we want to make it at half past nine, and at this point we anticipate the call is going to take approximately 15 minutes. We know automatically it's related to the correct company because we've come from Grant's record, who is actually working for Northern Trust, so we know that it's from Northern Trust. We can set reminders to automatically alert us if we're logged into the sugar screen via a pop-up a minute before the call is due or via an email, a predefined time, which could be a different set time to when the pop-up is going to fire up in front of us, just to make sure that we're at our desk ready to make that call at the set time that we've agreed with the person. Now again, these reminders can be turned off if you don't want them. They can be set in the user profile as to what you actually want to have that time frame set as. We put a description in, so it's going to be just to find out how he's getting on. And when we hit the save, it's going to do a number of things. Firstly, it's saving the call record against Grant's record. So anybody now who comes into the Sugar system and looks at Grant's record will see that there is a catch-up call planned for us to make on the 8th of May. And it's the user, Jason, that I'm logged in at the moment who's going to make that call. Likewise, when Jason next goes to his home screen, he's going to see that that call has now been scheduled in for him to actually make. So we've got the catch-up call with Northern Trust Corporation at that point. Also, on the actual user calendar, because Sugar CRM tries to make things as simple as possible for you, the user, to see not only what you are doing, but what also your colleagues are doing, it's immediately going to show up on the calendar. We've got that catch-up call there, which if we decide what we're not going to be available at that point to make, we can simply from this view drag and drop to a time when we are going to be able to make it, and it will immediately update that call in the back end. More importantly, if we're tracking our holidays, the calls we're making, the meetings that we're having, and some of our colleagues need to know our movements, it could well be that from a receptionist point of view that they like to know, well, if someone's ringing for you, I'd need to know, are you in the building, are you on holiday, when are you likely to be back? Sugar automatically caters for that by the shared calendar facility. If you click on to shared and select the relevant users from the user list, you're immediately seeing the views on a week to view for each of those people whose calendars you need to see. So you can immediately get visibility on what is happening within the CRM system for all those individual users so that if the person that they're asking for on the phone isn't available, it could be they're on annual leave, you can very quickly tell the person at the end of the phone, well, they're not here at the moment, but they are due back on Friday afternoon. Makes the company, the perception of the company, far more efficient because you've got that information now at your fingertips, purely and simply because the person has updated the CRM records with what they are actually doing at any point in time. 
You'll also notice when we were creating the records earlier on and when we were looking at those records in the system, that one of the features that Sugar CRM allows us to do is to actually assign records to individuals. All records within Sugar CRM will be assigned to a particular user in the CRM system who is ultimately responsible for the accuracy and upkeep of that particular record, whether it be a call, a meeting, a contact, an account. As account managers, they will have their accounts, their contacts assigned to them. It is their responsibility, therefore, to make sure that the data stored against those is actually up to date and accurate. Other users, of course, will still have the ability to be able to change that information. And likewise, in the record, it's showing who last changed that record, when. And on the change log within the records, they're going to be able to see which fields have actually been changed from what to what, when, and by who. So the account managers, record managers, the people who assigned them, are going to be able to get that full visibility, not only to make sure that the information that they're putting in is correct, but to also be able to see that the information their colleagues are putting in is correct as well. Records can be assigned at any point. They immediately need to have one at the point of creation. So if we go and look at a particular record, we can see this record is assigned to Chris. We can assign it to any of the active users of our Sugar CRM system. As soon as we click on the assigned user, it will bring up the names of all the users in our system to say, well, these are the people who we've got in there at the moment. Which person is it who it's actually being assigned to? Sugar CRM is also intelligent enough to know that if you assign a record to somebody else, when you click on save, it will send a notification out to that other user to say you have just been assigned this record to you with a link inside the email to that unique record. So the person hasn't got to go hunting through trying to find out what records have recently been assigned to them. They're getting notified immediately. And that is all done through the notification system and a combination of the user profile. Now, the user profiles... Because Sugar CRM is designed to be user-oriented, all the users within the system are given their own views, firstly from that dashboard. When they go to their home screen, they can customize the home screen as to what information they want to see by adding additional dashlets to their home screens. But more in instantly than that is from their user profile, by clicking on their name, clicking on profile, it will take them into the settings about their particular user, the method it logs in with, how information is displayed to them as an individual. We can see that some of the information, such as the type of user, whether they're an administrator or a regular user, cannot be changed by the user themselves. The last thing you want is for a user to be able to go in there and promote themselves to administrator and therefore gain access to information within the system that their standard user role should not allow them to get. They can, however, change things like their username, their password, the name that is actually displayed for them as an individual, as well as all the employee information about what their job title is, what department they're in, who they actually report to as their manager. And this information stored here in the inf employee information section, if the display employee, inf dis sorry, display employee record tick box is ticked, will appear in the employee directory. So straight away, we've again got a centralized area where as users, we can log in to find the contact details for all our colleagues within the organization, purely and simply because the users are given the ability to keep that up to date themselves. Again, our required fields are marked with an asterisk. They have to be populated in order for the record to be saved. But the notification side of things, which I was mentioning a second ago, are tied in from two areas within the user profile. The first is the email settings. The user should make sure that their own personal, their unique individual email address is put into that email address field. They shouldn't use things like sales at or info at because this is the email address which Sugar is going to send an email uniquely to them when any record is assigned to them. Therefore, if they're using a group mailbox such as sales at, Everybody in the sales team is going to know when that person has been assigned a record and will get a link to it. The second place within the user profile that needs to be correctly configured in order for those notifications to be sent out is on the advanced tab. And it's simply a tick box which says, yes, 
this user has turned on their assignment notifications. If the tick box is ticked and the individual email address is entered into that email address field, this user will now receive their email notifications when any records are assigned to them. The user profile is also the area when we look at the advanced tab where the user can define what their date format is in either SQL, American, UK date format, separated by either hyphens, forward slashes, or full stops. It's where they can define their time zone, or time format rather, as to whether they're in 24 hour or 12 hour format. They can also specify what their current working time zone is. Now this is a particularly useful feature of Sugar CRM in that if as part of your work job a particular user goes abroad to different time zones, when they log into their Sugar CRM system in whatever time zone they're in, the first thing that they should do on arriving in that time zone is to change this time zone setting in their user profile. What this will mean is that any calendar events that they now look at in the Sugar CRM system will now have the times converted to their local time. It's not affected the data stored in the CRM system. Anyone else who's still looking in their current local time zone will see the time zones correctly, will see the times for those activities correctly. But the individual user will now be able to specify, well, I'm now in Los Angeles, therefore any calls that I've specified to be made when I was over in the UK will now be converted to Los Angeles time, so I'm not having to work out, well, for that call at 2 o'clock in the afternoon UK time, what time do I need to be making it in LA? It's immediately going to show it in the system in LA time. So again, it's saving them a lot of time, making them more efficient as a member of the workforce. They can also specify their default currency, any opportunity stored within the system as part of the sales process will allow you to track what currency that opportunity is in, but the users can specify their default currency which they are primarily working in. Also within the user profile, they will be able to specify, for example, what color scheme or what theme. Again, this is a licensed edition only uh, feature. The community edition merely has the classic theme. Within the professional, corporate, enterprise, ultimate editions, users have the ability to specify the Pacific, which is a, a blue colored theme, Eco, which is a green colored theme, a More, which is a pink colored theme, or the Accessibility, which is based around the Pacific color scheme, but has a far stronger, bolder type font to it, so that people with perhaps visual or uh, vision issues will still be able to see that far more clearly than using one of the other themes. Because Sugar CRM supports a number of languages, some of which read from the right side of the screen across to the left, Sugar CRM has also catered for right to left reading as well. But it should be noted that this should be avoided if your standard reading format, as with English, is left to right, because it will cause confusion when you come to fill in the fields, because they will be at the opposite side of the actual field header to where you expect them to be. So unless your reading style actually is right to left, we would tend to avoid that particular theme. It's also the area in the user profile where we can access the, the automatic downloads from Sugar CRM for Outlook, Word, and Excel. These can be turned off if required. Some companies have security policies in place where any software to be installed on users' machines has to be installed by a central IT department. For that reason, Sugar gives an administration option to remove the downloads tab from user profiles so that only those IT departments can actually roll those software out to the relevant people as needed to save them being able to potentially take data out of the system without authorization. Another area within the profile which users will regularly be visiting, because the CRM system is an online accessible system, anywhere you have internet access and a web browser, you will have the ability to log into your Sugar CRM system. The weakest point of security, therefore, as with any online facility, is going to be with the user's passwords. If they're using something like password or the same as their username, there is a high chance that their account will be breached and the data which is of high uh, value to the organization could potentially be lost. 
For that reason, users have the ability to specify their own passwords, and complexity requirements can also be put into force as to minimum number of characters, whether it contains uppercase, lowercase, numerical, or special characters. Sugar can even be incorporated into uh, authorization uh, protocol systems such as LDAP, so that when a user logs into their machine, they've automatically logged into the CRM system when they go to it because it's got that connection between the LDAP server and the actual Sugar system as well. So the user profile area is giving the user their own ability to control how the system works for them. It does not affect anybody else on the system. Any dates, currencies that they change is for them as an individual. Likewise, the home screens, when they customize these, because these are their unique views on what's happening in Sugar, any changes that they make to their home screens are also unique to that user and do not affect any of the user's home screens or data within the system. So to round up, Sugar CRM, or Sugar, the actual product, is giving visibility of all the data that your company needs, restricted or and widened out to those users who need access to that data in order for the workforce to work far more efficiently to get the accessibility to the information wherever they are, whether it be via mobile devices, via PCs on their desks, they are going to be able to get to that data without having to worry about carrying notebooks around, storing business cards in their pockets, storing all their contacts on personal devices that could potentially get lost or stolen. It's all stored in the CRM system and available wherever they have got an internet connection. There are availability of offline clients with the, the higher level license versions as well. So if you're needing the access for your software or for your data offline, Sugar allows you to cater for that as well. But by giving that visibility to all your users, it's therefore empowering your users to have shared knowledge within your organization, which as the sales process goes through, is gonna be vital to all departments to see exactly who the customers are, what levels of, of product support and services they've got to make sure that the product is working in the best possible way for the organization. From the administration point of view in the background of Sugar, because Sugar has been designed with the customer in mind, as much as possible, control is given back to you, the customer, to customize and control what data is stored in the system, where it's stored, which record it's in, who has what access to those records. And all this is incorporated within the administration section of Sugar at no additional cost. Once you purchase the Sugar system, you have got the ability to control all that yourself at no future cost. So we've now come to the end of the brief introduction into Sugar CRM. We'll start now to look at the questions and answers and I'll hand back over to Evie just to, to control the Q&A session if we can. Thank you very much. That was amazing. <laughs> um, even though I'm working here, I think I learned something new. Thank you very much. So um, we have one question at the beginning. Um, please, guys, do not hesitate to ask questions here. And if you have a question, maybe later on coming, uh, you also can send us an email. That's not a problem. So we have a um, question, if creating a local currency and the report on a punity is ran, how would the total amount that the, that the opportunity are worth be, dis be displayed? Okay, well depending on how the currency has been set up in the system, by default Sugar CRM has the base currency as being US dollars. It can be converted to be whatever currency your local currency is. From that point on, any additional currencies that you are going to be creating will be at the exchange rate to that base currency. So for example, if you're using British pounds and you're putting euros in, you would put what the currency conversion rate is from euros to pounds. When the opportunity is put into the system, you would put it in, if it was a euro opportunity, you put it in as 10,000 euros. That will be stored as a euro opportunity, so anybody looking at the opportunity will see that it is stored in euros. 
However, there is also an extra value stored in the database which will show what that 10,000 euros is in the base currency based on the exchange rate at the point that opportunity was last saved of the conversion rates in that currency section. When the reports come out and your pipelines are coming out, you're doing your sales pipelines, they will look at what the user's currency is. So if the user is set that their currency is Great British Pounds, it's in GBP, then all those opportunities will be calculated based on the GBP exchange rate from the opportunity currencies. So that $10,000 euro currency, if you're looking at your pipeline in pounds, will all be totaling up in pounds on the actual pipeline, even though the opportunity itself was still stored and is still stored in euros within the system. So it's merely a case of, on that user profile section, setting whatever currency you want to see those pipelines working in, and Sugar will do all the calculations in the background based on the currency set in the administration panel. Thanks. Uh, wow, there are questions up popping everywhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think we will need some time after the webcast to answer those. Um, we have here, is there a full integration with Microsoft Outlook emails, calendar reminders, um, etc.? Yeah. As I mentioned a second ago, in the user profile, there is the ability included with the license fees for the licensed editions of Sugar, that's professional, corporate, ultimate, and enterprise. You automatically get the Microsoft Office Sugar CRM plugins. That includes the Outlook plugin for Outlook 2007 and 2010. That will allow you to archive your emails between Outlook and Sugar CRM. It will also allow you to synchronize your calendars, both from Outlook into Sugar and likewise from Sugar back to Outlook. From the Outlook to Sugar side, that is a selective, arc, uh, selective synchronization. So you specify which calendar items in your Outlook you want to appear in your Sugar CRM. The last thing you want is your friends and family's birthdays appearing in your company CRM. But from the Sugar CRM side, from the Sugar side, back into Outlook, the synchronization is going to automatically bring across any calendar events which are assigned to you as a user. Again, with contacts, you can synchronize your contacts between Outlook and Sugar selectively in both directions. So you'll pick which contacts in your Outlook contacts want to appear in Sugar. And within Sugar, you will tick the tick box that says sync to Outlook against those contact records, and the synchronization will then happen seamlessly between the two. Any time from that point that you have synchronized those contacts and activities, that the record gets changed in either system, at the next synchronization, it will update both the records based on the most recent change in either system. Okay, and then the, the question that is um, additional to this, do incoming emails get also automatically locked in Sugar? Not only right. Outlook contacts, but Outlook emails? Right. Incoming emails don't get, as far as I know, and I may be corrected on this in later versions of Sugar, but they don't automatically get logged into Sugar using the Sugar Outlook plugin. It is a manual process. It may well be, I haven't actually had access to look at the new Sugar 7 uh, plugins that are coming out. It may be that is something in future versions, but certainly up to 6.5.12 that we're using as a Sugar partner, it is still a manual process to archive the incoming. And I think the, the reason behind this is that you have a lot of incoming emails um, related to in contact, for example, when you have the key function as the email address. And then when, when you write 15 emails a day with this guy, even just around having lunch in 15 minutes, you will find this in your CRM. <laughs> and that's nothing opportunity related, at least. Yep. Um, yeah, we have, uh, so let me pick another one. Is there a way for Sugar to be accessed for iOS on iPad via Safari without losing any functionality? Right. Or should they use a different browser on iOS? Right. Again, with iOS and iPad, Sugar, being a web-based technology, is never going to 100% fully work with every single browser that's out there. They try to make it as accessible across as many platforms as they can, and in fairness to them, they do a very good job of it. With the Safari, yes, there is a certain amount of functionality that isn't necessarily available. 
Primarily, the most notable one is from an administrator point of view. If you're using the studio to actually change the layouts, you can't currently use the layout studio on an iPad or an iPhone using iOS because the drag and drop function doesn't work. Um, there are different browsers that you can get, um, things like, um, I'm just trying to remember, Google Chrome, Chrome on uh, iPad tends to work. But because Sugar is now being generated around HTML5, it's not using Flash content anymore, which used to be one of the main issues with the graphical content for things, especially like the charts for the reports. The need for those different technologies now has actually been, to a certain degree, actually eradicated by using that HTML5. The lot of that graphical content that was previously lost has now been made visible again. Yeah, so you can look forward to Sugar 7. Yep. Yeah, and it's, it's an amazing product. I just saw the, the latest uh, demonstration and look forward to. Yep. And the same also with the mobile version. It also will be based on HTML5, the new um, Sugar mobile app. Um, so I think we will um, close this Q&A session right now because I think uh, some of you guys want <laughs> to go home sometimes. Um, we have here, which marketing automation solutions can be integrated with Sugar? Right. There is a whole host of uh, integrations available, um, either already from uh, existing third parties, whether they be Sugar Partners, whether they be third parties who develop integrations between those products, or sometimes from the product vendors themselves. If they've got APIs, a lot of the time those application protocol interfaces will allow connection with other software, such as Sugar. Um, that said, it depends which uh, marketing solutions you're looking for. Either approach your initial marketing software vendor to see whether they have the integration APIs available, or speak to Sugar CRM or one of their partners to see whether they're aware of anything or if they can actually themselves, certainly as hosting partners at Enable IT, integrations is one of the things that we do offer. So sometimes it's worth talking to a partner such as ourselves to say, we've got this product, will it integrate with it? Or have a look on things like the Sugar Forge, the Sugar Exchange, and see whether there's already products out there that are already going to do those integrations for you. That leads me to the, the final um, information. So we have pages that you offered here, the Sugar Forge, Sugar Exchange. I have another page to offer. Um, I put it into the chat. It's the next webcast we will have together with Enable IT. It will be on June 4th. It's on um, Tuesday at 3 p.m. London time. And it will be around the differences of, um, around the Community Edition and Sugar Professional. Also with our great, uh, great host, Mikey. Thank you very much. So um, I want to thank all attendees. Remember, this webcast will be available on demand, so share it with your colleagues, friends, and family. Do not hesitate. Um, and we were looking forward to meet you at the next webcast. Thanks again a lot to Mike and the whole Enable IT team. Thanks to our attendees, and see you soon.